हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू दिस ऑनलाइन रिफ्रेशर कोर्स इन एजुकेशन अंडर अर्पित 2019 बाय नेशनल रिसोर्स सेंटर फॉर एजुकेशन सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साउथ बिहार गया द टाइटल ऑफ दिस कोर्स इज कंसर्स इन एजुकेशनल रिसर्च एंड असेसमेंट आई एम कौशल किशोर फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ साउथ बिहार गया This is the second part of the first topic that is basics of test construction for discussing the concept of test construction and standardization. In the first part of topic we have discussed about various related terms like test, item, subject etc. We have also noticed the steps to be followed in constructing a test and we have completed first step that was planning of the test by taking three cases. case 1 was constructing an achievement test for non referenced interpretation case 2 was constructing a scale to measure emotional intelligence and the third case was to construct an achievement test for testing the effectiveness of a teaching method on the basis of a criterion now after planning of the test we will move to the next step and that is defining the construct what is a construct a construct originates from a set of ideas resulting from various forms of human knowledge acquisition and perception synthesis of these ideas forms mental impressions delineating or identifying a construct in test development process is enhanced by linking the ideas or mental perceptions to a theory in simpler terms in the cases which we have discussed earlier three cases the abilities or the traits which we are trying to measure with the help of our tests are constructs psychological constructs are non observable traits non observable means they cannot be observed or measured directly rather to measure them we have to develop a framework that links a construct to a set of observable qualities attributes or behaviors it means while defining a construct we need to identify certain directly observable behaviors that reflect the presence of that particular construct for example if i have to measure intelligence of a person i have to identify the behaviors which can be observed directly and show presence of intelligence in an individual there may be many examples from daily life for example if you see someone that he or she is going through a way and in the midway there is some muddy puddle and the person escapes himself or herself and goes beside the muddy puddle then you can say the person is intelligent and someone who is not taking care of that muddy puddle and going through the, the muddy puddle that it means the person is not showing a behavior of intelligence thus this behavior passing through the mud, muddy puddle or passing beside the muddy puddle shows presence of intelligence the discussion on construct and its measurement may go long but we will conclude it here by saying that if the construct to measure which we are going to make a test is an already known and defined construct then it becomes comparatively an easy task otherwise the construct in consideration is a new construct then 
defining it is a research work in itself most of the time in applied educational researches we are focusing on the constructs which are already defined like achievement intelligence attitude aptitude etc so in these cases we define them operationally as per the need of our work for example take the case 1 the construct we need to define is achievement since achievement is already a well defined construct we will define it operationally that how achievement in ninth class physics will be reflected the main point is that defining the construct helps in writing the good quality items which sample correctly the behaviors reflecting presence of the construct thus if we know the construct well and identify the directly observable behaviors reflecting presence of the construct we can write effective items take one more example with the help of taxonomy of educational objectives we know that achievement in particular content of physics is reflected if the subject defines the con concepts explains differentiate different phenomena compares or give new examples etc so we prepare questions or items based on these actions now after defining the construct we move to the third step of the test construction and that is writing the items under this step that is writing the items we write items as we planned for a standardized test two items are being written by using blueprint as we do in case of teacher made test however while writing items for a standardized test the number of items in primary form is kept higher than the number of items required in final form you note this point that while preparing blueprint for teacher made test when we write items they are same number as we desire whereas here we are pointing out that for construction of a standardized test we write items more than the number that is desired in final form of the test how many more number we should write some experts suggest that the number of items written should be doubled as desired in the final form of the test however gilford suggests that one should need not to write more than 50% more items in the preliminary form than are wanted in the final form thus now recall the three cases as we discussed earlier in case 1 since we decided to keep 50 items in final form of the achievement test we should write approximately 75 items similarly the same concept will be followed in case of 2 and case 3 it is important to mention here that 50% extra is an approximate number it is not a rigid number we can write approximate 50% extra that may be quite high that may be not quite that may be some high that may be some low item writing is not an ordinary task heladina in 2004 discussed some item writing guidelines some important points suggested by heladina and mentioned by price in 2017 are number 1 items should measure a single important content as specified in the test specifications or blueprint number 2 each test item should measure a clearly defined cognitive process number 3 trivial content should be avoided number 4 items should be formatted that is style consideration in a way that is not distracting for examinees number 5 reading comprehension level should be matched to the examinees population number 6 correct grammar is essential number 7 the primary idea of a question should be positioned on the stem rather than in the options number 8 item content must not be offensive 
or culturally biased. In addition to these, we should also keep in mind that we should avoid double negatives in the question. If in case the stem of any item is containing term not, let us take an example, which of the following is not a characteristic of a good test? Here term not is a part of the stem, then this should be either written in capitals or it should be underlined or italic. For more details on writing the items, kindly go through a write up by Professor CPS Chauhan given in the support material in this course. Okay, let us move ahead. Once written, items should be reviewed and edited. If required, before going for the next step that is first administration, Gronlun suggests that the pool of items for a particular test after being set aside for a time can be reviewed by individual who constructed them or by a colleague. In either case, it is helpful for the reviewer to read and answer each item as though he was taking the test. This provides a check on the correct answer and a means of spotting any obvious defects. A more careful evaluation of the items as suggested by Gronlund can be made by considering them in light of each of the questions as discussed ahead. Number one, does each test item measures an important learning outcome included in the table of specifications? Second question, is each item type appropriate for the particular learning outcome to be measured? Third question, does each item present a clearly formulated task? Fourth question, is the item stated in simple clear language? Fifth question, is the item free from extraneous clues? Sixth question, is the difficulty of the item appropriate? Seventh question, is each test item independent and are the items as a group free from overlapping? Eighth question, do the items to be included in the test provide adequate coverage of the table of specifications? After writing and reviewing the items and before moving to the next step, the items should be arranged in a proper manner. Generally, the items are arranged in an increasing order of difficulty. Items having the same form and dealing with the same content are put together. After completion of the step of writing of items, now we will move to the next step of test construction and the next step is first administration or pre tryout. First administration or pre tryout as suggested by Guilford is the pre testing of the test that helps us to discover weakness in the instructions and in the format and to establish a reasonable time limit and desirable length of the test. Conrad in 1948 recommends three preliminary test administrations. The first one for which a sample of 100 examinees will suffice is for the purpose of uncovering the gross defects. The second administration is primarily for item analysis for which ideally the number of examinees should be about 400. The third administration according to Conrad would be of the final form as a kind of dress rehearsal to catch any obvious minor defects that may have evaded detection before and to determine reliability. Thus, the first administration of the pre tryout is conducted on a sample of approximately 100 subjects from the target population. The purpose of this administration is to detect gross defects, ambiguities and omissions in items and instructions and to establish a reasonable time limit for test completion. The subjects are also asked to pinpoint linguistic difficulties faced by them in understanding different items. This suggestion and reactions of subjects help the researcher or the test developer in rewriting and modifying some of the items if required. 
it is worth mentioning here that this pre tryout or the first administration which is carried out on approximately 100 students is for the purpose of finding gross defects and not for the purpose of marking so it is not done in a very strict environment rather in this first administration students are given liberty to ask their doubts or anything else which they are feeling regarding the questions during the test the main purpose of this first administration is not marking or any final judgment rather the main purpose of this first administration is to find out defects in questions any language problems any other difficulties in understanding the questions some kind of repetitions may be there in options some kind of repetitions may be there in questions by mistake so to find out to point out these mistakes this administration is carried out in addition to these objectives this pre tryout or the first administration is also used to estimate the time limit how let's take case 1 in which we have planned to keep 50 items in the final form but we have written approximately 50% extra items it means during pre tryout the subjects have to attempt 75 items so if time taken by most of the students is say 1 and 1/2 hour it means for the final form of test with 50 items a time limit of 1 hour will be sufficient in this way proportionately we calculate the required time limit for a test so friends this is all about this second part of this topic in this part we discussed about defining the construct writing the items and first administration that is pre tryout i hope that you have enjoyed the session once again we shall meet in the next part of the presentation in which we shall discuss the further steps of test construction thank you for watching this video namaskar